You gotta do it, Sean. Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to Geekstorm. I'm Sean Hilton and today we are joined by Mike the Stick Harrison, <laughs> April O'Neill Thatcher, right here in the heart of downtown Kokomo at our friendly neighborhood Pepper Whistle, where they're having a special on whatever you like today. So check them out. <laughs> hey Mike, hey April, what have you guys been up to? What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's like my fake... Uh, Game ho show host kind of thing uh -huh. or something. Uh -huh. I'm not sure I like the nickname The Stick. The Stick. <laughs> I'm not sure I like that. I was gonna go with Sticks, but you only use one stick, so you're the Stick. <clears throat> stick, wasn't the Stick the guy who trained Daredevil though? He was cool. And he was cool, he so was I'd cool. be like, you can't give yourself a little nickname. So Terrence Stamp cool. in the movie. Really? Yep. So, he's Stick. The you're... Stig is the guy on um, the show, I can't remember his name. All right, <laughs> thanks for contributing. <laughs> Okay. Now let's get into this. I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, well, uh, what's... Uh... Boom. Guy from Dexter's Daredevil. Let's do that. Maybe. Maybe. Well, let's talk. talk. He's he hasn't about said it. he wants to do it. They want him to do right. it. Right. The thing is, they start they start production in, in uh, six weeks, maybe, and in, in 1st of June. So and they don't have a Daredevil. They, well, they haven't announced one anyway. We, okay. don't, we don't know. So it's the main character from Dexter? From Matt Dexter, Mur right. yeah. Michael, okay. C, Michael C. Hall is uh, uh, the main character in, in, in Dexter. Right. And... Um, he might be kind of hanging on that one of the show's producers, one of the Dexter producers, have talked about possibly doing another Dexter spinoff, and he doesn't want to commit to anything long term. But this Daredevil deal is only 12, 10, 12 episodes. Yeah, but you know if it goes well, they're gonna they're gonna want to sign somebody to a multiple year deal. Right. You're not gonna want to if it flops. They're like, hey, let's walk away. But we know it's not gonna flop. Netflix, right. Netflix, Marvel together means no rating probably. Now they're sure not gonna go hard R, but we're gonna be able to see some really good action and probably some really good violence. He's right. a street level hero right. who's beating people up with sticks and fists, karate, leaping action, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, plus on top of it, I mean, it's a guy in a costume. Yes, as Matt Murdock, which is a very important part of it. Matt Murdock is Daredevil. Matt Murdock is a blind lawyer, legal use kind of guy. Very major aspects, like Clark Kent with Superman. You're not just gonna have Daredevil. In fact, I would imagine you're gonna have more Matt Murdock than you're ever gonna have Daredevil. Probably so. Regardless of all that, so in you know, it's all conjecture. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Regardless, what do you think of that cast? He's, good that's important. he's a good actor. Um, he's in good shape. He was in good shape all through Dexter. You saw him quite a bit. Uh, he, his his killing costume in Dexter was uh, just a kind of like a a plain long sleeve t shirt and a pair of jeans. And uh, so he is very much you know street level. In that character that he played anyway did a lot of a lot of combat and and, and so he's he's used to physical roles. Um, it'll be different to see him. I've not, I've not seen him in anything other than Dexter, okay? I know he's done other stuff, but I haven't yeah. seen him in anything other than Dexter. He was, wasn't he in the Mortuary Show on HBO? Yes, I did not see that. So, and he was very, my thing with him is, the two things I've seen him in, in the, in the Mortuary Show, which I apologize to people who I, I don't remember oh. the name, but he was a mortician, and in Dexter, he's, everything I've always seen him in, he has been Overly evenly keeled, flat like line, stoic. Yes. Yes. yes, very yeah. monotone. Which works for Dexter because that's what that character is exactly. supposed to be but like. Exactly. Daredevil, but Matt, and especially the lawyer. I have some casting that you know, if I were at least putting a guy out there, I want to do a screen test with. Is it Damian Lewis? Sure. The uh, gentleman from Life mm -hmm. and from Homeland. Mm -hmm. He's got one. He's redhead, I right. believe. He's a ginger. So I don't know that Matt's a redhead. I think he's. Brown hair. Either way, you, but he's you the right frame, that. and we have seen him in multiple things do stoic. Right. I've seen him do crazed in what Dreamcatcher from Stephen yes. King. Yeah, uh, life, he is. Life is one of my all-time favorites because he is that. I am laid back. I'm chilled out. Everything's. I'm meditating. But there's whatever. A Flip it. Bam! I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna mess you up. I love that. Right, that is. Right. That is. You know, if there's like a character go-to thing yeah. for me, it's the switch. Yeah. Any character, Doctor Who did one that had a guy that was like that, where he's like, I'm cool, we're cool. You try to destroy the world, I forgive you once. Right. You did it again. Now, I have to kick your ass. It's so, one of those, uh, 
regardless of how it goes, it's one of those things where I'm glad that Marvel, at least, is not being forced to or trying to jump into all the, the Disney staple of, of, of casting, you know, all the young uh, Bieber-ish yeah. sure. girlfriend types. And, okay. And uh, yeah. looking for actors. So uh, I like that. I do like well, that, because he's a real and, actor, regardless. Even though he's, like, plays a stoic character, he always has that kind of... you. A little evil sense. Sure. So. And Daredevil has one of Daredevil's side characters, one of his major characteristics, and it is a subplot through a lot of his things, is his religion. He is right. devoutly Catholic, and they play on that whole, he's Daredevil, and this guilt that he has from, he's a vigilante, he understands that what he does is outside, and he's a lawyer, so he knows what he's doing is outside the law, but it's a matter of doing what's right over what's, you know, what must be done kind of thing. Right. They play that inner conflict a lot. So he, I can see Mike, you know, he's a, he's a great actor from what we've seen. I just hope that he's got the range to pull it off. And then on top of it, I mean, you know, I, you're not gonna get anybody that's gonna be able to do the parkour, flipping stuff. You're gonna, that's stunt man, right. wire work. So. Well, the, I'll just say the last, last thing I'll say on it is that the Matt Murdock in, in the comics, especially in recent years, is charming. You know, he yes. is he's char charismatic. He's not, uh, he's not the, guilt-ridden uh, person that, that was, let's say, 80s, 90s. Uh, so hopefully he can pull that off. Um, you would almost want somebody, and I don't, I don't mean uh, somebody, I don't mean Bradley Cooper, I mean somebody like Bradley Cooper, somebody who, is, who Got has that, that yes. Uh, walks in yeah. to the room blind, yes. walks up to the prettiest woman in the thing, exactly. who's lonely, exactly. sweeps her off her feet, does the huge, exactly what I do, woman dance blind. thing. Correct. Okay, um, next. I want that to happen. Uh, your favorite show of the new of the new year's canceled. Uh, mind games. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Christian Slater. See, you know, what he's doing over, there over three. is called sarcasm <laughs> because we watched that show and I looked right at the camera and I said that ain't gonna last. <laughs> and how many episodes did it go? Do we know four? I, I, I probably have them all on my DVR because I watched the first one. Came in, we did the report, and I said. The people just aren't going to get this. It's it was the too... most rated non-rerun on TV on that night. So, when, Which when is too bad because Christian Slater, is, he just keeps whiffing and whiffing. And, and, but I think he's doing the best acting he's probably ever done. He's, he's quit doing his Jack Nicholson impersonation. <laughs> he's doing his own thing. He's had some interesting roles. He's doing a lot of work. I mean, he is getting a paycheck. Mm -hmm. This could have been a good idea if they'd gone a little bit of a different route. And then the other gentleman? Steve Zahn. Love Steve Everybody Zahn. Everybody loves Steve. He's got that charismatic, charismatic uh, personality that He's I was foggy. talking about. Yeah. He'd be a perfect Foggy Nelson. Yeah, yeah. So, man, I, guys, Damian <laughs> Lewis, Foggy <laughs> Nelson, right. get this casting done. Yeah. Th that, oh, you would, those two together? Good. That chemistry? That would, oh. I just, oh, Netflix. Maybe you should be. I'm a just saying. I need, I'm not asking for any money. I'm just saying. Maybe invite me to the red carpet thing. Get me some autographs. Let me fanboy out. Film a little geek storm from the red carpet. That'd be nice. You know, I'll bring you, I'll bring you guys. Ways. You would, or somebody better looking than you, and I'd definitely take her. Wow. So. Wow. All right. What else you got? Um, Fox has a new show coming out. Fox. Fox. Fox little network called Fox has got a new show coming out. <laughs> okay, please. Party or should. Hey Fox, uh, <laughs> Firefly. <laughs> Screw you! <laughs> well, no, they had to cancel Firefly. Okay. They had to. Yeah, to make room for programming like this. <laughs> oh, like it? Oh, what are we getting? It's called I Want to Marry Harry. And what they've done is they've tricked X number of hot little American chicks into believing that they are on a game show to win the hand of Prince Harry. Okay, the I, actual I, uh, like guy from England? Yes. Like the Prince Harry. Yes. Now he's not on the show. He's not in any way. So he's he's got no idea. The show's even going. They've on. got an impersonator. This show is already filmed. Otherwise, they wouldn't be ready to, to show it because it's it's a trick. But they've done this for with like Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire or one a show like that. What? Where yeah. The guy wasn't. <laughs> they did a reality <laughs> show where one guy thought he was I'm on a reality to. show and everybody else was an actor. Yes, uh, I would say four or five years ago they did a show where uh, it was they were all competing to marry a millionaire and turns out at the end he was a ditch digger. Yeah. And uh, so they do stuff like that, but they they have to film it all first and then show it because otherwise spoilers mm -hmm. would be out. Apparently, uh, this, they've got a very good impersonator of this uh, of this uh, Prince Harry, and these girls are being tricked into thinking that they're competing to marry Harry. So that's why we don't have Firefly. Okay. Well, I have yeah. a question on Go. that. Go, April. Go. Why is it that these girls 
have they never watched television? Do they not know that these reality shows are? But, that, I mean, it's only like or is it every, like they want fame? Yeah, they like, want fame. Every, every every few years, only every few years do they do one of these trick shows. You know, everything else seems to be pretty legitimate. Plus, and, how many of these shows do we know that and, that never even see the TV screen? And they never do well. Yeah. None of these. I mean, we can't name one of these shows. We can talk about the concept. Right. The only reason I know about the one where it was one guy is because that's the, like the most reality show moment is always right. this guy because at the end he's like holy cow wait a second you're an actor because you're, he, he thought he made a real friendship with one of the other guys right. and you know and he's like but you're, you're really not my friend and he goes dude no I really do like you just, this was my job and I mean you can tell it just broke his heart not the fact that and I mean he won right. because of whatever it was but here's the thing is how ignorant do you have to be to really believe that. I mean, how desperate for fame or ignorant or just plain stupid. To marry into royalty. Or I guess yeah, not quote I mean, sexual. <laughs> that just, I, what caliber of woman is that ignorant to believe that not? Why would you, just, there's a show called what? Oh, I'm going to be accepted? Google? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait a second. That's not how that works. Right. It's not on the BBC even. Come on. <laughs> that's true. It wouldn't be. You know, right. I was like, ooh, that's an American network. I think, no. Yeah, it's so Fox, ridiculous. So it's, uh, well, they deserve Yeah, you it. wouldn't be they a little suspicious it. just knowing that it was on Fox. Right, like, that's the thing. They've done it before, so it's a... Uh, what a bunch of crap. It is a bunch of crap. Wow. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys see the trailer for the new Hercules movie? Did you, see, did you watch that? No, I did not. The you rock, really why don't you tell us about it? rocked out. He, yeah, oh, he little, little oh shredded, shredded I did out. see like a um, still frame from that too. or something. He's a monster. Yeah, he's like crazy looking. What I read, he, he like for three months, like moved into an apartment with not, no family, no no friends, no contact with anybody whatsoever, and all he did was was work out. And uh, he works out. Yeah, and he looks like girl. Look at this. Like, you know when you got the when you have veins popping out of your arms that are bigger than probably my muscles. I mean that's big. He's he's just he looks yeah. too big. You know he looks unhealthy big. But, uh, he looks like Hulkish. Yeah. Like I saw, it was from the back. Yeah, it's got the real big. Yeah, and it's like wide, holy. Yeah. Cow. Uh, and besides that, the trail looks pretty cool. Um, it looks, it's a lot of uh, mythic beasts. Um, uh, so, so CGI monsters. Yeah. Uh, what's the two or three headed dog? Uh, Cerberus. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, looks good. Uh, it looks pretty. Looks pretty. Pretty cool. Um, uh, another trailer that I'm completely not excited about. TMNT. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by uh, Michael it's Bay. You. I, uh, I like Michael Bay. I like how Michael Bay, uh, you know, puts we'll the camera down that. here, yeah, and I'm looking up here, and he moves it around, and it's all actiony and everything. It's like That's the fourth time you said that. I know, and I, <laughs> lo I love it. Right. Well, you know, like certain directors have certain, like, um, oh, who's the, the Evil Dead guy? Um, evil Dead guy. Yep. I'm not gonna help you. Oh, come on. Well, let's just burn in that one. Spider-Man. Sam Raimi, maybe? Sam Raimi. Raimi's got, Raimi, ha, Raimi will have a, a Coke, Coke camera. Let's be careful. Though. Like, he'll have a, he'll have a camera He's on the Coke. And when, you go, and when you go up to take a drink of your Coke, it'll let's, come up there. Let's be careful with the Coke, please. It, we don't need so any wet. That's his thing. He'll put, a, he'll put a camera on anything that has motion, and so you see, you know. Gotcha. Michael Bay's thing is... Sweeping it's shot. Low angle sweeping shot with the, with the hero looking the other way. That's his, that's his thing. Regardless, that's the best thing about this movie. I can tell you right now. Uh, I've never seen it. Nobody's seen it, but the the, the trailer looks pretty awful. Um, I have no desire to see another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. Like right. April O'Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a Volkswagen bus. It was awesome. Nice. Yeah, my hair's kind of the hair color. Nice. Yeah. You could definitely I am April cosplay. April I need. I just need yeah. a jumpsuit. He could do the costume. Somebody give me a yellow jumpsuit. He could be Mikey or Raphael or yeah, Mikey, Donatello yeah, or Leonardo. Which one had the bow staff? Well, Donatello. I, I hate to say it, as I'm long time comp guy all my life. Mm -hmm. I've never been into the turtles. I wasn't either. Just uh -huh. never did it for me. I don't have anything against them. I think it's, you well, know, they're, they're I was kind of little fun. when like the cartoon came out, so. Right. When well, those comics came out, they were black and white. There was a small press. And they were that, magazine size. Yeah, and that's weird. one of the first things that made me waste a ton of money on comics was like, let's say a year and a half into it, all of a sudden Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one is going for two or three hundred dollars, yeah, which, which I mean, it, was I a lot mean, of money. Early, late 80s, early 90s money right. yeah. was mm. big money. So then I started, and this is around college or so, I started buying number one issues of everything that came out. Was, it with a bunch of adjectives it, in the it title? Matter. Yeah, it was, oh, it was awful. Uh, there, it was and so I mean, it was, there was the black and white glut that they call it, or the funny animal glut where you had everything. There was like hamsters. radioactive adolescent teenage hamsters or, or space <laughs> mutant hamsters. Yeah, yeah, it was, There's yeah. one that I actually did like. It was called Aristocratic Extraterrestrial Time Traveling Thieves. 
Wow. Which was like a little alien dude who looked alien, sure. but like a cool alien looking sure. dude, short, super hot chick that was his girlfriend, and they were going around in time, like stealing uh, the KFC recipe and just stuff, stupid they stuff. They didn't like reenact that. the aristocrats joke. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. no. no, 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 no. April, I'm taking a dark turn. So, um, but, uh, well, so, yes, go ahead. We talked about this a little before the show that um, one you of the. Your memories associated with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I do. Childhood uh, memories. Yeah. So do I. Um, that it's their bodies are, and their look isn't the standard, what everybody that grew up with them is used to. Mm -hmm. They're like more humanized and, and less smooth. I think maybe, uh, like you're talking about, they have like longer limbs and, and, uh, I think that's because they know, the movie makers anyway know that they're going to have to do some action in this movie to, to try to hold on to the audience and they can't do the same. Um, kind of cartoony action they did in, the, in those uh, late 90s movies. So um, I think that's why they try to they humanize them a little bit more. I saw some stills and-, and uh, It's all CG too, I would imagine. Yeah. They're, well, yeah, they're, I mean, there's a lot of CG, but it's actors in suits. It's, sure, it's, uh, but for all that hopping and flipping and jumping around, I'm gonna right. guess there's gonna be a lot of CG. Right. So, and in the original 90s one, it was all practical effects. Right. We had virtually no CG for any of those. I imagine there wasn't any CG for those. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm budget. Not, I'm not gonna watch it. All right. I, I mean, I'm gonna have to watch it, but doesn't mean I gotta like it. We'll see. I'll go into it open-minded. You know. Hey, you got more on the list. What do you got? Uh, let's see. How about uh, for the first time we talk on here about Agents of Shields quite a bit. Um, somebody from the actual from the show associated with the show, um, that Chloe Bennett that plays. You are off today. I know. I really what? am. Who's the? Is it the river or sky? Yeah. She plays Scott. She said in an interview, in an interview that the blue thing at the end that was a Cree. Oh, That's, she let it out of the bag. She did. Oh, you screwed up. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so Cree. Yeah. Captain Marvel's coming. Yeah, well, I assume. I don't, yeah, but I don't know. But, uh, that, that's a Cree. I mean, they had a list of four or five you know, possible races it could have been. And one of them was even uh, just as plausible as the Cree was that uh, whatever their race Yondu is from, because Yondu is in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So, um, in the movie coming up. So, it could have been him, too. But Centurions, I think. Yeah, that makes up for the other. Um, <clears throat> but she said Cree in an interview, and uh, she said it in a way like, yeah, we all know that, right? And then she's like, oh! Kind of, <laughs> like, uh, second-guessing herself. Busted. So, she might get in trouble for that. I don't, I don't know. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Now, is it a clever slip, you think? Or, I mean, because Marvel's not, you know, there a lot of people out there now are, are doing stuff like that on purpose to yeah. dissuade and trick um, the, the audience and fans. It's been getting better. People, I think, are overreacting since the, the second half season. This is the, it's so much better. It's better. Mm -hmm. So much better and, and trying to make, I, people for whatever reason just want this show to be great. Mm -hmm. It is better, but it's still not like, I'm sorry if they canceled it, other than just I'd be out a Marvel show to watch, I, it wouldn't fill up my DVR with tears. So I did watch the latest Arrow, thought it was pretty good. He had uh, the return of the Huntress and meeting up with Black Canary. They actually call it um, the Birds of Prey. Uh -huh. And you see them fight. So you got hot hot babe on babe fight action. But Huntress so was wasn't cool. birds, she wasn't a bird of prey, was she? She's been associated with oh, them. The, okay. the original Birds of Prey is Oracle and Black Canary, but then Huntress and a couple of other the tougher females have been involved. So she there there's some connection there and the uh, there's another Easter egg. They they meet at uh, the corner of uh, Gale and Simone, oh, that's funny. which is one of the, the <laughs> writers who made it well known. But isn't the main writer Chuck Dixon, who actually created the the Birds of Prey concept, mm -hmm. it still seems to be fairly estranged from DC because they still give this man no love. So whatever he did to burn that bridge, it appears it was sticky napalm because it's still on fire. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, I think the last thing I have. Uh... Um, from one of your favorite movies. I love movies. I know. One of your favorite movies. What's your favorite movie? Well, my absolute. Give me your top three. The Quiet Man nah. is my absolute favorite. That's Big Trouble in Little China is no. my second favorite. No. Raiders of the Lost Ark is my third no, forget favorite. No, forget it. There's the theory. Sin of a Woman is one of your favorite movies. I love Sin of a Woman. Okay. Uh, but Jane it's not. It's not probably not even the top ten. Really, not top ten? Probably not. Really? Because I don't like it at all, and you like it a lot. So I, I do. It's it's why 10. I don't care about the Oscars anymore. The year that Unforgiven beat Sin of a Woman uh -huh. was like, no, I'm not, you're idiots. Huh. I've walked away. Wow. It's that long that I've held a grudge against the Academy for, wow. for this oversight. That's it's a long not time. good to hold grudges. Yeah. The only thing Unforgiven did was make an unforgivable Oscar movie. 
So the truth is, it's a pretty good movie. I like westerns, but it beats Cinema Woman. <laughs> Cinema Woman has it's that point, great. Just letting your anger scene. speak. How can you not like Cinema Woman? I'm going to take a flamethrower to this place. <laughs> wow. <sighs> uh, I'm glad our producers didn't have headphones on. I love Cinema Woman. It's such a good movie. Actor James Reborn, uh-huh. uh, who plays mm-hmm. some guy in that movie. Okay. He passed away. He's probably best known. He's in Homeland right now, or what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was Anyone probably probably the most people have seen him in was in Independence Day. He was kind of the smarmy. Uh, He's always a Weasley kind of guy, of state, or government uh, guy. Yeah, or... um, and there'll be a picture of him right here. Maybe not right in front of April. Well, like not if right you want it done this week. Agree, yeah. not, if you want it up anytime soon. So no. You're saying that every time I ask for any kind of production value, <laughs> we don't get to see the show for Monday several, or Tuesday several days. No. I I don't think that's true. I think he does a great job. Uh, James Reborn right here, uh, 2000, whatever, he's 65 years old. Uh, but one of those people that you, you, you don't know his name, you know, uh, just like but James you know. Remar. But as soon as you see his face, you'll know who he is, and you're like, oh, he's that guy, you know. That's um, too bad. Uh, or it's, it's sad to see anybody go. Sure. But, you know, those are not my top, some of my top three. Quiet, Quiet Man's number one, Big Trouble in China's number two, Raiders of Lost Ark's number three. The thing. Do you differentiate between be favorite and best? No. Because some people do and some people don't. No, 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 no. That's my favorite movies. I understand okay. that Big Trouble in Little China is not a good movie. Right. But if it comes down to, Sean, what do you want to watch today on the desert island? You're about to die. Right. I want to watch those movies. Those movies entertain and, and make, you know, I enjoy them. They fill me with, with happiness. I mean, Mike, I, just, I, just I never to... drive faster than I can see. <laughs> On the reflex. You don't drive faster than uh, anyone ever. I've never seen you pass anybody ever. But you only had your license for a couple years. So. What, what do you got there? This is the new audio drama slash play mm-hmm. from Big Audio Finish. It is from the new Pathfinder line. Now, People have listened to books on tape. That's mm-hmm. been around for a while. Sure. This is more like an old radio show. Mm-hmm. Every character is dramatized by a different actor. There are sound effects. There is musical accompaniment. There is production. It's not just reading a book or even reading it well. Mm-hmm. Or you reading it and then changing your voice for a couple of parts. This is actual voice actors mm-hmm. doing the entire thing. Now, for those not familiar... There's Dungeons and Dragons, D&D, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, D&D 2.0, 3.0, 3.5, Fourth Edition, D&D Next, whatever. But Pathfinder has pretty much picked up the reins of the Dungeons and Dragons uh, kind of feel and have made it their own. So now instead of playing Dungeons and Dragons, most people are probably playing Pathfinder. And even calling it D&D, it's like Xerox, you know. Well, I'm making a Xerox of everything when you're making a copy. Now, do I, if, I, if, I play, if I listen to this, do I have to worship the devil like most D&D play, players do? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't. No, That's no, weird. No, no, because <laughs> mo- most D&D players are actually uh, very intelligent well, and sure. Uh, sure. good people. Right. So I just wondered. I didn't you know. know. I didn't no, know. They are, they're not, in fact. So have you listened to it yet? Like, I have not listened to this one fully. I've listened to samples of it. Mm-hmm. They've given quite a few, mm-hmm. plus um, my good friend, who let me uh, borrow this for today's show has listened to it all and he gave me a little little bit about it. I have played through this is a what's cool about this is it's an actual adventure or the story is based on an adventure they put out. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, we went on our adventure and our characters did all this stuff. Now here's the audio drama of how the you know creators saw it going. Because when you play these things it always goes in a different direction. Things happen. But this is what you know they thought, you know, if it had gone perfectly how it should have gone. And the samples that I have listened to are great. Mm-hmm. These are the same group that does the Doctor Who ones. When Doctor Who went off the air for you know all those years before we got the relaunch of the new Doctors, they did original adventures, all new audio dramas with the still living Doctors or the actors who played the Doctors mm-hmm. in new adventures. Mm-hmm. So these guys are no slouches. They know what they're doing. Excellent production quality, the highest. And so this is 70 minutes long. Mm-hmm. So it's a little short, you know, they had to condense it down to get it all to fit. Easily could have been two or three hours, probably based on that adventure, and I can't wait to listen to the whole thing. Well, but good. Pathfinder Legends, Burnt Offerings is the first chapter in the series, and what it'll do is, there were six chapters to make up the entire campaign. This will go through all six of them by the time it's done. So if you've played Rise of the Rune Lords, I can't see why you would not want to listen to this, because... You've done it all, so you want to see how others might have done it. So I think that's really, really cool. Cool. Also, we've got a big community event coming up. 
this Saturday, if this goes up, which might not now because of your little thing. <laughs> what? Sorry, not this Saturday. I was wrong. Next Saturday. Yeah, so we'll have plenty of time. <laughs> so April 5th. April 5th. Right. Right. Just like that thing. We are going to be having <laughs> tabletop day at Pepper Whistle from 10 in the morning till 6 at night, which means that you can come in from 10 till 6 and there will be board games all day long. And that's in conjunction with like International Tabletop Day, which is right. something Will Whedon does right. for his uh, video blog show or whatever okay. he does. So April 5th, 10 a.m., come on in and <clears throat> there'll be people bringing games, people teaching games. We want you to bring your favorite games and teach them how to play. And isn't want... something right after that, isn't something going on? I don't know. Isn't Cowboy Bob coming? Cowboy Bob. On first Friday, Bob on is April coming the 4th. To first Friday, but April's got that information. They didn't yeah. want to step on her toes. Oh, sorry. Hey, April, tell us about Cowboy Bob. Yeah, so if you guys were a child of the 80s here, or before. Here I am. Well, you were like a teenager. Really? Was he but, in the 80s? I think he was the 70s. He well, was he, like for 80, our age. 86, I believe, was he the retired after 20 years of being on air. Okay, so he's from 66 to 86. Yeah, yeah. I was so born in 72, so it turns out that yeah. he was from me. <laughs> Whatever. I loved Cowboy Bob and the Helping Hand. And actually, I got to go see him at the UAW one time, and I won an Easter basket. It's pretty awesome. That is a great story. It is. And uh, Todd but, Jordan, who owns Kokomo... Him and his wife Amber own Kokomo Toys and Collectibles. Kokomo Toys, located in the heart of downtown yes. Kokomo. Is it 111? Something like that. Yeah, I think that's a couple. I'm at 121. One, they're like three doors down. Okay. Um, he was there also when I was there when I when we were kids. Wow, that's like fate coming together to do nothing. It is. Yeah, to do nothing. But he's gonna make an appearance here in Kokomo. Yes, at, on on April 4th, first Friday. I thought it was Saturday. That's why I said that. No, Sorry. it's. Um, this first Friday is Earth Day themed. Okay. I'm not sure how that ties in. There's but, a theme. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. going to follow it. I'm not going to follow it. Okay. But anyway, it's freaking awesome. So, so you come, you can see the cowboy ball, get a picture maybe? Go, go into Kokomo Toys and so hang out. Next and, Friday right? at 6 o'clock, uh -huh. Comics Actually, Cube they have, is having oh, okay. Sterling oh. Clark come in. And he's going to do art and sell prints. He's in the Kokomo Tribune. Then mm -hmm. after you get done seeing Sterling Clark, you head on over to Kokomo Toys. We'll be able to meet Cowboy right. Bob from the show where he'll be signing autographs and talking to people. And I think he's, he might even have a book. I don't know. But uh, the hours have changed for First Friday. They're is it 5 now? 5.30 to 9 or question mark. How, depends Probably on how much fun you're having. Open. Okay. As yeah. it gets warmer, yes. things are getting a little better. Speaking right. of uh, events, how was the burlesque show you went to last week? <laughs> I, I tried to go to it last month. Too. I am way she excited. She really wants to go I to the really show. Want to go. Also sponsored by Comics Cube. Yes, it is. But it turns out it's not, it wasn't tonight, last week. Which yeah. you won't possibly see this by tonight. It's so tonight. It right. So it'll be in the past when you see this. So yeah. it was right. yesterday. Okay. Um, also, I had a... the Our friends at Geek This Podcast... Geek This Podcast? ...have been trying to... Is that to, David Hunt? And David, David Clements. Clements. Okay. Um, have been trying to get... The Black Knight, I believe, or is that what it's called? The Dark Knight. It's the Dark Knight, yeah. yeah. Um, which is a documentary about people who summon the... Inner spirit of Batman? Yes, because once they realize that... We need to get 65 tickets sold right. here in Kokomo for them to play. Right. So, and Comics Cubed is uh, buying like five tickets to sponsor it, so... Okay. You know, we're doing it, our part. It looks really cool. I watched the trailer. I mean, it's like a so, heart-touching kind of cool thing. Of we will have a link up on GeekStorm um, to go to wherever it is you have to do to like pre-buy the tickets. Right. They have to get to 65 or they're just not going to have it. Right. So, At the AMC theater. Which I find to be and, kind of funny because I've been to several times where there ain't no 65 people in those theaters and they're showing whatever. Oh, but all right. Um, to have and, a special engagement, 65 tickets. Right. And it's really cool because this, is, this year is the 75th anniversary of Batman. Who first appeared in Detective Comics 28. Detective Comics 28. Wrong. I hope you didn't leave me astray. She so told you some BS. <laughs> it's Detective Comics 27, you ignorant moron. 27? Yes. 1938. What is what? wrong with you today? What is wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> I am. Let's let's establish that usually, as far as facts and things like that go, usually I'm I'm detective. Comics I'm usually 28. I'm usually the okay? one. I am sickened. Come on. Oh, 
return in your geek card, sir. I was thinking... Amazing Fantasy 16 is the first appearance of Spider-Man 2. Hey, don't do voices. You know, you know good at it. All right. I've got, I've got a Thor number one from the 60s. How about some other crap that doesn't exist? Bring it on. What else you got? Well, technically, Detective Comics 28 does exist. I was just wrong All right. when, it, when it was. Yeah, his first appearance. <clears throat> I was thinking 38. I've got a whole it's okay. 179. Had I not failed, it wouldn't be on you. But thank you for trying to help me. It's okay. All right, well, this is uh, 29 minutes in. It's a 30 minute show, so I'm Sean Hilton. Wait, we have four, 13 seconds left. Guess the host. The, I'm always happy to see April we have back. 13 seconds left. This idiot here. We're in live in the heart of downtown Kokomo at Pepper Whistle, Pepper Whistle, Pepper Whistle. So come on in and check it out. Thanks for seeing. We'll see you next week on Geek Storm. Goodbye.